Empowering story number two, P-E-T-E-R-D-I-A-M-A-N-D-I-S Upon discovering that Charles Lindbergh flew from New York to Paris in 1927 to win a $25,000 prize, engineer, physician, and entrepreneur Peter Diamandis came up with an idea to offer an incentive prize to build and fly a reusable private spaceship. In May 1996, without the prize money in hand, Peter went on stage under the ST. Louis Gateway Arch and announced the $10 million prize to build and fly a reusable private spaceship carrying three people into space on two flights within two weeks. He thought that he would easily find a sponsor. Moreover, the prize was to be paid after the spaceship successfully completed both flights, and you don't technically build a spaceship in a few weeks, so there was plenty of time to find the right benefactor. Except it didn't work out as Peter expected. Between 1996 and 2001 he would pitch to over 150 sponsors and get rejected 150 times. Fortunately, his persistence and grit eventually paid off when in 2002 six years after announcing the prize he met the Ansari family who ultimately funded the $10 million prize. The prize was paid out on October 4, 2004 to the Spaceship One team led by American designer Bert Rutten. Today. The Spry's Foundation has awarded over $300 million in XBRIZS designed to encourage technological development and radical breakthroughs for the benefit of humanity. As Peter said in his article about his breakthroughs, if I had to name my superpower, it would be persistence, or grit, i.e. not giving up, even when everyone is telling me that it isn't going to work. 17 Dealing with a Failure Due Town Realistic Expectations, Quick Recap. 1. The second common type of failure is failure due to unrealistic expectations. Some people get stuck in a cycle in which they set unreasonable expectations, fail, try again, and fail again due to being unrealistic with what they can accomplish. Point 2. To prevent this failure from happening, make sure to do proper research before setting a goal. Ignorance leads to unrealistic expectations, which leads to failure. Be particularly careful when you're a newbie. Assume you'll achieve average results and focus on proven strategies instead of seeking magic pills. Point 3. Be open to changing your approach if your current strategy isn't working. Being stubborn when your approach isn't effective won't magically make it work. Point 4. Accept that things rarely go as planned. It might take you longer to reach your goal than you'd like, and you'll probably overestimate what you can achieve in a short period of time. Be patient. Chapter 4, Dealing with a Failure Due to a Lack of Focus In today's world of never-ending busyness and hundreds of tasks to do failure due to a lack of focus is one of the most common reasons why people can't achieve their goals. In fact, I believe this problem is the biggest hurdle for accomplishment, and that's why I wrote an entire book about it, The Ultimate Focus Strategy, How to Set the Right Goals, Develop Powerful Focus, Stick to the Process, and achieve success. The fundamental rule of the ultimate focus strategy is that the more goals you have, the less likely you are to achieve them. I strongly recommend limiting your objectives to no more than three, and ideally just one or two, that you'll be working on every day, or as often as you can. Working on numerous goals in different walks of life at once means inevitably neglecting some of them. At one point, I practiced five different sports bodybuilding, rock climbing, Krav Maga, tennis, and swimming. I also took frequent walks and went and bike rides. Needless to say, I couldn't really focus properly on any of those activities and progress quickly. I had to quit bodybuilding, tennis, and swimming sports that I had been failing at anyway and didn't enjoy as much so I could improve quickly in rock climbing and Krav Maga sports that I find more entertaining and challenging. If it hadn't been for quitting those sports, I know I would have continued to fail. My performance would have been heavily affected by a lack of focus. In my book, I cover in great detail how to focus on the right goals in the long term, but for a quick summary, here are the basic guidelines that will help you eliminate the risk of failing due to spreading yourself too thin. 1. Sacrifice is necessary. Sacrificing less important goals will give you more power to work on the most crucial objectives. Prioritize big life improvements like changing your diet, getting a better job, starting a business, or finding a life partner, over less significant objectives. Point 2. 
Embrace boredom. It's exciting to set new goals or follow new strategies but if you prioritize excitement over effectiveness, you'll only lose focus and possibly fail. If something works, stick to it. Point 3. Pare it down. Each time you're struggling with prioritizing your tasks consider which task can make other tasks irrelevant or easier, and do that one first. Resist the temptation to procrastinate by first doing the easiest tasks on your to-do list. Instead, find a way to perform a task that will permanently take those less important tasks off your list. Point one of the world's most successful venture capitalists, Chris Saka, founder of Lowercase Capital and a guest shark on ABC's reality television show Shark Tank, wrote in his blog post announcing his goodbye to the venture capital world the following paragraph The only way I know to be awesome at startups is to be obsessively focused and pecked to the floor of the deep end, gasping for air. I succeeded at venture capital because, for years, I rarely thought about or spent time on anything else. Anything less than that unmitigated full commitment leaves me feeling frustrated and ineffective. As you've heard me say on the show, if I'm not all in I'm out. 18 If you're working on a particularly challenging goal, the all-in or out approach might be the only way forward, and it certainly won't hurt if you decide to follow this philosophy at least partly and greatly limit your focus.